I like to do these routine walk arounds. Uh, as a day trader, guys, we sit on our fat butt, literally my fat butt, all day long. Either trading or helping members or answering emails or PMs or all that good stuff, right, guys? So we, it's like, it's kind of weird. Like, you know, you start trading to get freedom. We talk about freedom, being able to do what you want to do. And I end up freaking in my prison cell, which is my office. Albeit a nice prison, but still a prison. So you have to, you have to find balance, guys. All these guys chasing money, money, money at the end of the day. All they are left is poor with money. You know, you're, <laughs> it's like the saying goes, right? You're so poor, all you have is money. You are so poor, all you have is money. And that's what I felt like before MIC. Yeah, MIC gave us a purpose, help others as well as to do what we love. Great, loving you guys, hearing you guys crush it. The MIC process works, man. You know, at the core of the process is the technical analysis we call the lines. But more importantly, it's the risk management aspect. The process includes knowing which stocks to avoid trading, which stocks are best to trade for your niche, which best are trade for the shorts or for the longs. Once again, risk management, which stocks to avoid, knowing which stocks to avoid is half the battle. How often you're like, what the hell am I doing trading this difficult stock all day and losing? And then all these other guys are trading these easier stocks. So we help you identify which stocks are the easier stocks to trade for your niche. Am I right, guys? MIC? I mean, dude, that's, I mean, half the battle is knowing what stock to trade. Right, guys? Knowing what stock to trade. What stocks to trade, which stocks to avoid. Half of your danger is gone re ready when we already identify which is the hot chick, which is a side chick, which ones you should trade long, which ones you should go short, right? And not only that, the timing. I mean, the time is fucking crazy. Take a look at the zombie. Zombies happen all the time. So those are the things that people don't understand. They used to laugh, but you know what, man? They laugh all you want. These are, of course, zombies don't happen every single day to every single sticker. But remember, all these are rules are called observations. In science, they're called an observation, and it happens more likely than not. You know, rather be safe than sorry, guys. So I'll, I'll review what I did today. Today started actually out very slow. There's not many new stocks on the ticker, on, on the scanner, and they've already been down. So I woke up today late, actually, dude, a half an hour late. And that half an hour caused me to miss a lot of trades. But you know what? It's okay. When you say you miss trades, it's still pre-market. Trading in pre-market is different than trading in the regular hours, guys. Because in pre-market, you have to size down. It's because the volume in pre-market is not as big because the algos are not working hard um, until the open. So, and Robinhood is not open until 9, you know, things like that. So there's a lot of brokers that aren't even open yet. So pre-market, I equate that to... I always use an analogy as an explorer. You are the explorer, like a CRISPR Columbus, you know, going to a new area. Whoever wakes up the earliest, there's no map. There's no pre-market map. You are the guy that are trading that early pre-market. You are the one making the map. You are the map maker. You are the CRISPR Columbus. So when I wake up later, sometimes I wake up late on purpose because I'm scared. I'm scared to have FOMO. I'm scared that... I may walk into a trap, you know? I'm waiting for someone to draw the map for me. I'm waiting for whoever wakes up so early that they become the Christopher Columbus, that they actually get eaten by the alligator, and then I have the map. And so the moment you get eaten by the alligator, being the Christopher Columbus hero, you know, I look at the map and I go, oh, that's a spot to avoid. There's an alligator right there. So that's, that's what, you know, these maps are doing for you. Pre-market trading. Let those guys trade early. You know, who's to know what's the top? Who's to know what's the bottom? You know, let them do it. The volume is very low, but they're building the chart for us. And a lot of times, it could be the guy that's scamming. It could be the algo. It could be the company. It could be the promoter sending this play up to sell paper. Who knows? So sometimes waking up later, guys, is not a bad thing. You know? 
So there's there's the pros and cons. So you wake up a little later, the map's already drawn for you. You know what to do. The lines are established, but sometimes you do not feel the size you want, or sometimes you don't feel at all. So it's safe, but there's always a risk reward, right, guys? The guys are waking up early. The guys are beating the Christopher Columbus. They have huge risk, but they also have much bigger reward than you. So there's a balance between too much risk or being way too conservative and not having any reward at all, where there's no meat to the bone. So you find that balance in life, in trading, it's, it's just like the lines, right? You don't know which lines to use. You use the outer line, the middle line, the, the inner line. So there's a balance between being too conservative and waiting for the outer lines all the time and never feeling. Or being way too early. But I like to err on the side of caution. I always tell everybody, start one line later than you think you would. That one line later is a, is a huge difference. It, it's a difference between stopping out at the top or being able to hold through a break. So, whatever you want to do, just try that, guys. So a big trick that I always do is start one line later than you think. Because your brain always wants you to have FOMO. I don't want to miss a trade. I don't want to miss a trade. Or, a lot of the guys, what they do is they size down the first entry. I do that too, just to get that FOMO in. So, I've been sizing down okay being knowing the range these markets these things range so much ctib range so much and so instead of having let's say a thousand each order start doing 500 shares or 700 shares the difference between a thousand and 700 to add is a significant amount of difference okay that means so i'm able to withstand a lot of these big run-ups you know, if I size down, I can now widen my stops. And that's, that's what I've been trying to do and becoming more patient as a result. So I so a lot of times if you size too much, guys, it's hard for you to hold, even for a winner. Because you're like, oh shit, I have so much. And so when you start to exit and scale out, a lot of the times you, you're just greedy. You're like, okay, I fucking do. I'm going to get out every uptick. If you're short, every uptick you're going to get out, right? It's because your size is way too big. So sometimes sizing appropriately down affords you to hold longer. I fuck up a lot because I size way too much. And, you know, sometimes even if I'm in the money, I'm like, dude, I'm going to take the money. Because because I'm like, I'm looking at the money. I'm like, oh, shit, it's too much money. It's too much money for the, you know, then, then my mind comes and starts to like mess with me like hey man why are you trying to be greedy this is a lot of money whatever right so when you start the moment you start to look at your PL, now all shit goes to hell guys <laughs> i'm telling you right now good and bad it's the it's just the emotional response and so but if you are sized accurately if you're sized correctly properly you don't look at the PL because you already know you're comfortable with that size <clears throat> when i look at my PL, it means i size too much it means that i've added to a loser it means that i'm doing things which i'm not comfortable so your body is the biggest indicator of whether or not you are doing the correct thing in trading i'm gonna i'm gonna repeat that because this is very important guys the best indicator that a human being can have that they're doing something correctly or incorrectly is anxiety you as a kid breaking the rule curfew rule sneaking in and out your parents house you know you know that's wrong so, so you're you, you have such anxiety and stress but if you're allowed to go out you're gonna walk out the front door make as much noise as you want say hi and bye to your mom no big deal because you are sized appropriately so so use that as an indicator guys use your body as an indicator of whether or not you are properly sized or even if the trade is going well if you are so nervous, that means this should not be a trade for you or your size too much, okay? No one is going to tell you that this is a bad trade. You hit the wrong line. You know you hit the wrong line. You know you had FOMO. Let your body's anxiety and stress meter help you become a better trader. So I've been using that indicator, human indicator myself. When I feel like I'm shaking, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take some off. I'm gonna take some off so that I don't feel like I'm in too much. 
So that's what happened this morning to CTIB. I, I had a plan. I got greedy. I was sized up. Same thing with CLSN. And then I'm like, oh shit, man. I, I'm sized too much too early. So I took some off early on purpose. The moment I took some off early, oh man, a big relief came and I can hold the rest longer. Okay, so that's the thing we don't understand. So indicator would be human indicator. What I want to do today is uh, bring someone on. It's been a while since I brought someone on. If you want to raise your hand, someone wants to come on that that has something. We're not going to do stock picks. We're not going to, you know, this is a general discussion and how we can improve your trading. If someone wants to learn how to improve your trading, get on. I will help them and we'll, we'll go through this. Well, we uh, this weekend, what we had was uh, every two weeks, we had what's called a chart review for MIC in the Saturday mentorship program. So you send a bunch of charts and we actually go through the charts. You know, so that's a great program that we do for members. So you guys should join just for that. I mean, there's just so much, guys. Every single week we have webinars. Let me see. Three guys. Uh, let me pick one person. I have no idea who this person is. Zili. Hey, what's up, brother? What's up, bro? <laughs> this, hey, hey. It looks like I've seen you before. Where have I seen you yeah, before? Yeah, I, I came on like last three months back. Like, I don't know, three, four months ago. Are you the one from uh, um, uh, United Kingdom? Scotland. Scotland, there we go. Yeah, 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 there we go. You had the... How you're you doing? You're doing the bars or something? Yeah, the nightclub. The nightclub. There you go. Yeah. yeah How's that going? Well. <laughs> not well. Not well. But you. But I remember last time I've we shot. I've been shot from uh, last last year March. Oh shit! I remember you told me that they shut you down and you started day trading. Yeah. yeah. Well, I kind of like got into day trading before that. It's been about three years. I've been learning how to day trade. Okay, so this is perfect, man. I randomly picked, uh, I, did, I for, totally forgot your name. Uh, so tell Z, everybody your Z. name. Z, yep. Z, Z Ali. Z yeah. Ali, yep. And then uh, tell, tell, catch us up. What's going on, man? It's been like a year since so, you've been on, right? Yeah, bro. It's so been, the, uh, it's been, yeah, it's been a year. Yeah, yeah, almost a year since I last spoke to right, you. What's your name in chat so I can remember again? So Are Z you? Ali, Z Ali. Oh, there we go. So tell us. Tell us the, the update, man. This is very interesting. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, dude. Good, uh, good or, so good or bad don't matter. This is a process. So yeah, yeah no worries. <laughs> last time I spoke to you. Yeah, so I mean, three years into trading, sort of joining MIC, lifetime member. Started off uh, first year, just a monthly subscriber. Obviously, like so much, so much to learn, so much to um, take in. So did as much as I can. Was a bit lazy to start off with, but then I realized I needed to commit myself a little bit more. So I ended up uh, getting the lifetime membership, kind of made me want to do more in terms of learning. Got a, got a lifetime membership, absolutely amazing. Looking forward to all this boiling over so we can come all across the pond and uh, have some meetups and stuff. Um, when I spoke to you last, um, I kind of was like using my day trading um, account to kind of like like hold stocks when the, where like the trade went wrong so i used to buy into sh stocks pumps and dumps and end up just holding some other some of the positions so I ended up having like maybe a, a dozen tickers just randomly just going up and down over the, and then decided one day to just take everything off take the hit and just take everything off um and Kind of like just clear my clear the account, just stay, so there's no more noise. Cut your losses and, and start helped. over. Yep. Yes, yes. I mean, I knew what, I was getting better at what I was doing. I was it was patience and all that. One thing I want to say is circumstances, personal circumstances, is probably one of the most fundamental um, sort of barriers we we will come across when it comes to trading. When it comes to trying to do it a full time sort of an income base. Um, I've been very fortunate to be able to have and run my own businesses over the years. So when it comes to affordability, you know, I had the, the income to cover some of the losses I used to make um, th through the week, you know, 
again, I used to try to keep the size relatively to my sort of threshold. Um, you know, just risk what I can afford to risk, basically. And um, so with this COVID, my circumstances sort of changed and I found that directly affected my trading. I yeah, there's no more income. Trading. There's no more income. Yeah. People are dependent upon it. <laughs> No, yeah, more yeah. I mean, no more safety net. No more safety net. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, when, when, when I had my nightclub and I had the, the regular income coming in, I had a cushion out within my trading. I knew that I could sort of, um, whatever I kind of made a loss on that week, I could kind of like make up with my income from my business. But uh, when that stopped with the, with the shutdown of the, the, the business, I kind of, the mindset was kind of like, this is, I need to make money, you know? I need to make money to cover my losses. Too much pressure. That, yeah, that kind of made, made me think, right, um, you know, chasing a bit, taking bigger sizes just to see if I can get the YOLO trade and just YOLO all the way. Just try to, <laughs> try to be like a hero type of thing sometimes um, because, you know, you're kind of in a, in a position where you want to like sort of make that one good trade and, 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 and cover all your sort of um, ongoing sort of commitments. And uh, I found that to be a very detrimental thing to, to trade in. You know, I think I would say 80% mindset, 80% mindset from my own experience. So what, what happens yeah. during that time? Because you, you started to become uh, profitable. I remember you cleared out. Yeah, your yeah. Oh, then, uh... Absolutely. I mean, you know, it takes years of experience to be able to get that confidence in, in just taking that trade, you know, um, and being able to accept that you're wrong when it goes against you is like one of the biggest personal hurdles I overcome, like the ego and all that carry on that gets in, in, in the way. And honestly, like if you, like MIC, the education side of it, like, you know, the social side of it is brilliant. The, the banter we have, the, the great laughs we have, the jokes, the after hour, all that's amazing uh, and it's great. And you get to meet amazing like-minded people. That's all good. But when it comes to like, you know, like learning the mechanism, you know, you've got, you've got vast, of, vast information available to you. Anything you don't know, reach out to the boys. They'll help you. The moderators are amazing. That's fine and well, you know, you know, you can spend the right amount of time learning the process, learning all that. But three years into learning how to trade, like I am efficiently trading, but the mind will always be the, the, the biggest enemy of yourself. Yes, and it's yes, like, exactly. In the personal circumstances, if you can't afford to lose that trade, don't trade. Like, you know, if you can't afford to trade with, 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 the, the capital that you're away to trade with, don't do it because yep. you'll make their whole experience completely work against you. I, I always it'll... say, if, you're, if your personal life is in chaos, so will your trading. So make sure the I mean, personal life is a little more stable. Honestly, listen, get your shit together. Get your shit together and, 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 and like have your own pot of money that you can, you can um, sort of dedicate and, and sacrifice on the learning process because it's always going to be a process a learning there's going to be goods and the bads and like i said you've got to go through the bads to come out the good i've been through the all the, 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 the all the scenarios a trader goes through over that type of period of time the three year um, sort of uh, time scale i've been through it all i've been i've been frozen i've been uh, excited i've been upset and obviously mentally you get all types of scenario playing out in your head when things go in a certain way it's all about getting your shit together. You know, the, you know, joining MIC will teach you the process. Like if you have that commitment to learn, you'll learn everything you need to learn. But if your personal circumstances, and I emphasize this to everyone, if your shit ain't together, there's no point in trading. Even if you make a few lucky trades here and there and you think you know, you don't know until you prioritize your tri trading over whatever else you do in life. You know what I mean? Yep. It can you, provide an amazing life. Who's your tab group? You, I don't, uh, well, I got, I got guys. Uh, we, we, we became really good friends. 
but we kind of all doing our own shit and we've helped each other and it was great but like we kind of all kind of ended up doing our own thing so but i think it, you think like that's that. do you think that's one of the reasons it's got more difficult because you you were part of a tab group, Listen, which... there, there's there's definitely a benefit for having a tab like some people and I, i'm talking about like i like to trade on my own i, I realized that i first thought i needed someone to be there holding my hands type of thing and keeping me right but like with all due respect i my tolerance my pain threshold as they say <laughs> is slightly more uh, than what my boys had and i respect that everybody's in a circum different circumstances um i felt like i needed to kind of be my own person in in terms of risk management and i tell you what man like i'm taking trades that i feel like i should be taking i don't take trades i don't i i'm working so hard on my fomo because my yeah. circumstances has changed i i i i got my shit together despite the business still being closed i went out there and 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 grafted for the last several months while trading when i can and i got myself shit all sorted now i'm focusing like on the trading just like on its own you know what i mean i'm not i'm not letting yep. any other shit get in may, the way may 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 maybe now is you're ready for a new set of taps that matches your profile so you can try that too yeah i mean again like is it certain people are definitely yep. going to benefit yep. from that yep um, not everybody I'm may like what I I I'm the same yeah, way where, you, man. Where I am, I, 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 like, I, I'm I the same way you. Like, when I, <laughs> I got the tab, you guys. Yeah. I I, 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 I like you. I, I trade best of luck. The guys regularly, like regularly. Patrick and Corey, my my boys, like for life. We're gonna visit each other. We're gonna like you know all that's happening. But right now, like I've got my own personal sort of journey here. Like I've got like a, a target for myself to be able to control my emotion. and be able to trust myself within within the risk management and what is, what is your current good. strategy what what's your current strategy that you're uh, trying to I used right to now? be long I'm, i used to be long biased uh, i've adapted the short biased and i'm finding that the short biased thing is working because you're risking the top you know you're risking the the, the high of the day um and, and 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 again sizing sizing is everything what you just said earlier on man if you if you don't have that comfort comfort size is like even if it goes against like a few cent you're fucked like yep, you know what i mean yep yep you, so this is like, this is great i got a trade i just they took a trade just there and the other thing i do now i i i lock in the profits i don't let it just do its thing i i lock in the profit as soon as i'm in in the green like it's i'm just following that profit i'm just taking this you know i'm not like oh let it go because i used to do that i used to be up uh, at one point and then the, the then you get a squeeze and then you're out right yep it's all be that by the time you're trying to adjust your uh, stop loss yeah you're zombie out and you 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 end up taking actual loss instead of trying to break even so what i do is when i see a stock that i feel like it's 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 doing my thesis i lock in break even you know but if i'm seeing breaking down really well i'll take as much profit you know i'll yep. lock in i wouldn't necessarily take the position off but i lock in no on the way I, there I, you know, i've paid for my time so so know, this is good yeah, so what here won't, like say, so let me summarize what you said this is perfect so basically what you're telling me is risk management is the key so there's a couple ways of risk management you oh, are they, risk risk managing your life That's the first step risk managing your life because you said if your life is shit yeah, yeah, yeah. your trade's going to be shit. So what I hear is this is exactly right man. First you have to everything in life is about risk management. You don't want to die, right? You don't want to die. You know, you don't want to get shot in real life, you don't want to get shot in So so manage your risk from your personal life as well as your trading life. And that's the key. That's exactly get what you heard. Get your shit together. Yep. Absolutely. Get your shit together and adjust your risk management Listen, risk management is like and and this is why the, I'm telling you I I I risk I'm, 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 management I'm, I'm, every day you hear me scream that in the room risk management risk management every day we are not it's, here to gamble I, it's fine listen it took me 3 years 
to understand risk management and, and how having the right risk management in place, locking in your, your, your stop loss, making sure, like being realistic, being, be, you know, as a, an experienced day trader now for me of three years, I feel like I have an understanding of the price action. You know, I can, I am following the price action. I'm looking at the tape. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at key points where it's telling me, it's speaking to me, right? So if I'm, if I'm in neglect, if I'm denying or sort of not taking that shit serious and, and, and making my own ideas in my head and telling myself this is going to do that and it, when it's actually not, then you're kidding yourself and you're basically going to end up just causing yourself unnecessary losses. Paper cuts can sometimes mount to big losses. You know what yep. I mean? Yep. And, and I, think, I think if you realistically follow the price action and, and you take that trade and you put that stop loss at a realistic figure and if it goes against you, taking a loss like a man yep. will make you a better trade. And then you guys mentioned it recently. It's, it's about how you take the loss. Like if you take it like a boss, then you feel a loss shouldn't be a bad thing. Hey, it's I'm telling you, er, there, there's a point of every single trade that goes wrong that you could have gotten out, no problem. But when you choose to hold on a little longer, and that's when the problem is, right, guys? Take the take the that's loss, exactly you know you're wrong. Yeah, well, I used to because do that. I used to do yep. that so much. I used to do it all the time, and it, it did. It ruins the whole the whole process. It ruins the whole trading day. It ruins because you're being stupid. I mean, it, there's nothing more or nothing less about it. You're just being daft. Yeah, yep. you're being stupid. You're being ignorant. You're being stubborn, and you're just not got the right attitude when it comes to what, when you stop man, um, risk management, except you're wrong, you know, and yep. the, the, the market will do what the hell it wants to do. As long as you understand that you can't always be right. And when you are proven to be wrong, take it like a man, you know, That's exactly that, right, man. <laughs> when, you, when you start taking those losses like that, you know, I was right once, maybe I'll be wrong next. It shit happened. You can't always be right. It's part of the process. Yep. Risk management, my friend. Well, thank you for the update. We'll see you in like six months and you can give us a great update on the next one, man. But you, you, you hit it right there, brother. Yeah, risk, management, awesome, risk management for the, for the life as well as for trading. Risk management all the way. Absolutely. Thank you, man. And thanks again, guys, for great work. All the moderators and the MIC family, when all this shit goes away, we'll all meet up and we'll all have a good time. <laughs> for sure, man. Thanks, man. We'll see you back in the room. All the best, guys. Take it easy. Yeah, how we turn this off? Hey, there you go. <laughs> well, so to summarize, what what happened was risk management, man. Risk management for life as well as for trades. You know, there's a certain point where you can take the loss, and it's okay. So go back to the last time that you took a major big loss. Think about think about all the times before you could have taken that loss before it became big. So that's what you got to work on, guys. When you lose, analyze why you lost. Okay? Analyze how you could prevent that. Sometimes you cannot prevent it. You know what I mean by prevention? You can, you, there, sometimes you cannot prevent a loss. You already fucked up and you cannot prevent a loss. Right? So managing that loss is the key. Making sure that loss is manageable. And so we always talk about that. So you, you see me start to post a lot more charts where I stop out. Like yesterday, right? I stopped out on Sino, S-I-N-O. I stopped out basically for a 10 cents loss or something, very minor. But then I attacked it at the right spot at $12 line and made 80 cents out of it. You know, things like that. So let me uh, take another person that I have not seen before. Let me try another one. Chiru. I'm just randomly, uh, whoever raising their hand. <laughs> Waiting for Chiru 55. Yeah, I miss these IG live <laughs> screenshots, half screen. You know, trading, guys, is simple. But simple does not mean easy. We know what we need to do. We need to be able to wait for our lines. We need to put in the stop loss. We need to exit when we need to exit and not have greed. But, but human nature, man, we know what we need to do. It's like when you're a little kid, you know you're supposed to fucking go to sleep early, eat your vegetables, 
brush your fucking teeth. <laughs> but you know, you know, and, and do your homework. But you know, it's so simple. Have you done that? You know, life would be much simpler. But we we don't as human beings, right? For some reason, we have FOMO. We get anxious. We think we can get away with something, and that's what happens, man. All right. So let me find another person. Raise. Who wants to be on? Raise your hand. I'll get the next guy on, and then we'll we'll end it after that. Who wants to get on for the IG live screen? Oh, we have a lot of European guys. We have a lot of Asians, European, Australian. A bunch of our moderators is from, actually a few moderators is from Europe and Dubai. This is international, guys. We have people everywhere. All you need to do is have an internet connection and you can be learning trade stocks. Anybody want to get on? If not, then we we'll can end it. I really want to get back to CTIB. <laughs> CTIB is a low float. So you got to be careful, guys. Cool. I guess everybody's doing well today. But you know what, man? Hit up Tosh, guys. We talked about this yesterday. You saw me. You probably bored of me yesterday. That's why. Um, we'll see you next week and online. Hit up Tosh. Tosh, text your number. <coughs> Anybody who needs any assistance in trading. You know, we have a accelerator program and all that stuff. So we're not going to go through that again. But just text Tosh. It'll help you out today. On days that I go live and Alex go live, we, we love to give out discounts for those products. So, all right, man. Thanks, guys.